we are at the materials collection of TUM and you can see here a normal brick This one gets a little lighter already. This one is a clay brick, a um, little lighter and it's not been burned. And down here we have um, lightweight bricks. Let's see this one over here. That's latest generation with um, insulation infill. Instead of putting um, 24 Standard bricks, I could put one of these lightweight bricks and that would be um, my wall. But it has to be stuccoed from either side. So if I need a lintel, I would take one of these elements here. You can see that they are the same width than the lightweight brick was. And there are two, uh, and this way around, there are two. Um, concrete beams integrated, um, tension being in the lower part, so that's where the reinforcement bar uh, can be found. And in the middle there's a styrofoam block to insulate the inside from the outside. And here we have uh, a lintel with an integrated space for a roller shutter, which is quite popular in Germany. I think it's the only country in the world where this is popular. And you can see that there are the reinforcement bars integrated in this uh, prefab lintel, which can be uh, longer or shorter, maybe at around 2 meters, 2 meters 50. Uh, this comes to an end. Here's another lightweight brick and you can see that on the way from the outside to the inside the way is made as long as possible. So the warmth or the cold has to get around the holes on its way from the outside to the inside. Here we have a lime sandstone, quite popular in Germany as well. You can see that it's the same format as the bricks. So there's a standard for these uh, formats. They exist in different materials. And also the um, clay bricks here try to comply to the common format um, in Germany. So you can choose between one of these. They are uh, different in terms of their physical properties, but uh, the size would be the same. So masonry is about the bond from one layer of uh, stones or bricks uh, to the next. So if you pile them up uh, without a bond, then the construction of the wall is rather weak because these move uh, separately uh, from each other. But then if I'm creating a bond, the whole thing becomes uh, stable. And if I'm using mortar between the different layers, then it gets even more stable. So um, one of the basic conditions of the bond is that the vertical joints are displaced one uh, to the other. Here, masonry construction where you can see the bricks of the wall, the mortar, and there's a stucco on it, and there's a lintel which is necessary to bridge the opening in the masonry wall. Inside this lintel you have rebars, but you cannot see them from the outside. So where it becomes interesting for us as architects is where we have uh, interaction between architectural form and the construction that we choose. Like for example in the curved walls, the curved garden walls in, at the University of Virginia by uh, Thomas Jefferson. So he stabilized uh, the wall 
against buckling by giving it a curvilinear form or one of the building which is um, discussed very often in terms of limits of masonry construction is the Monarch building in Chicago by Burnham and Root, I think. And there the, um, the walls in a high-rise um, building, the Monarch Knock building, got so thick at the bottom that uh, people thought that this was the limits of masonry construction and then they could switch to steel construction instead. So if you look closely at the plans of the Monarch Knock building, you will see that the exterior walls are made out of masonry and on the inside you already have a steel construction. So the constructive scheme of the Monad Knock building uh, would be something like this. It's already a hybrid construction between steel on the inside and masonry in the facade. Another building which is enigmatic in the use of reinforced concrete is the Lovell Beach House by R. M. Schindler in California. And he uh, created a series of um, uh, following uh, concrete slabs and then um, punched holes out of these uh, concrete slabs. And these holes line up to uh, form spaces in the perpendicular sense of the um, initial uh, concrete slabs. So this is a very creative way of combining the construction method of a monolithic uh, concrete wall, the holes inside and the spaces that you can create by a series of um, alternating uh, concrete slabs. cemetery in Munich. This has been redone after World War II by architect Döllgast. So here you can see a part of the original building, which was done in rather refined bricks. Here the corner has been repaired. As we can see, there are old bricks and new bricks. And we can see the uh, arched door openings. Uh, the arched lintels here that uh, transmit um, the load from above to either side and here in the masonry. It's been made out of recycled bricks so the joints are much uh, wider and uh, the bricks have traces of their former use on them. You can see wider joints and the proportion of the brick is rather smallish. The bricks are kind of irregular and they have traces of the former stucco on them. And uh, maybe a slight uh, lime wash as to unify them. And I would suggest this is a two brick wall where you have the binders and the stretchers here alternating from one layer to the next. we have a circular ring beam on top of the wall and the architect succeeded to um, stretch the windows up to the ring beam so it's the lintel at the same time you can see here at this opening where that is not the case he introduced a reinforced concrete lintel so here we have three types of lintels no lintel at all a concrete lintel for the medium part and these openings have been added recently because they use modern lintel technology with a rebar and concrete on the inside. I've been showing you this at the materials collection before. So here I'm in front of the Alte Pinakothek which is the old uh, picture collection uh, in Munich 
and uh, you can see that the building has been um, destroyed partially in World War II and architect Dölgast, the same as in the cemetery, has uh, rebuilt uh, the central part of this facade in a simplified way. Thank <laughs> you.